Welcome to UK Business Show, UK's premier business show where we feature business thought leaders, high achievers, and industry experts. Today's episode is brought to you by World Outsourcing Solutions Limited, a company that specializes in helping executive business owners with virtual assistant services and business growth systems. Here's your host, UK Kachidori. Hi, guys. Welcome back to another very special episode. Today is another that I have with me somebody that I respect uh, who has come to uh, to my attention following the work she's doing with uh, ladies over there in Canada. Now, let me ask you a question. Have you ever wished you know how to move from one goal to another and do it in such a way that it will uh, give you a sense of meaning? And at the end of it, uh, you live a life that you truly want. Well, if you do, you might might learn one or two things in our conversation here today. And on the show, I'm joined by Lisa Mitchell, Lisa, who has an extremely uh, powerful story uh, that uh, I hope will encourage you because it did encourage me. Lisa, thank you so much for joining us on the show. Thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited to be here. Incredible. One of the things I love about Lisa is uh, she believes in helping others uh, from what she has personally learned in her life. Uh, and having experienced a health scare at the age of 27, uh, she discovered that certain things that hold her back were not that important. And then she went on to eliminate those things and uh, created a lifestyle that she wanted in a fairly short space of time. Lisa, without me you know, uh, messing up your story, please tell us a little bit about yourself uh, before we get into to the main uh, topic of today. Oh, thank you. So yeah, let me share a little bit about my health care and what that experience was. So uh, if I was to take you back in my life about six, seven years, and you can do the math, well, that I am now. Uh, I was living a very different life. I was living in a small town in northern Canada. I had just recently gotten married. My husband and I had both had really good six figure careers. We bought a house. We were traveling. We had good friends. You know, everything was going really well. We ticked all the, the regular boxes of success, if you will, in life. Yes. And that is when I had that scare. And my health scare basically came up, and I had this realization that I might only have a year or two left to live. Yeah. And I remember looking at my husband that night and I turned around, looked at him in bed and I said, honey, what do you want to do? What are we going to do if I only have a year or two left to live? And he's, he's a logical, super pragmatic guy. So he turned around and he said, Lisa, what do you want to, what do you want to do? You're the one that has a timeline. Oh, and the, and he's, he's a smart man, right? Yeah, and, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. and, you know, he, he just said, what do you want to do? And the first thing that came to my mind and my heart was move to Vancouver. And that, that was a dream. And I think we all have these dreams. We all have things that we want to have as children. And for me, one of those dreams was to live in the city and to live in Vancouver. I would come to the city with my parents. I'd come here for a dance convention and they would fall asleep in the hotel room. And I would sneak out and go to the window and pull open the curtains and look at the city lights and just dream about living there. And every time I came, I just I had the sense of being home. And then as I got older, I realized, well, first of all, you know, I was 11 years old. I couldn't move out yet. And, <laughs> and so I stayed in a small town. And then my university was in a different town. And then my job was in a different town. And my boyfriend was in a different place. And then my job was in a different place. And then my mortgage was in a different city. And Vancouver became very, very expensive. And what, I, what my dream felt like is it felt like this whole list of reasons why I couldn't. And it felt unrealistic, un, unachievable for me, to be really honest with you. But in that moment, you know, laying in bed and I had to really ask myself, you know, am I going to listen to these reasons why I can't? And it was a long list. <laughs> I'll add to that. Add to that. My husband is a small town boy. We have a quad, you know, an ATV kind of thing. Like, what are we going to do with that in the city? Yeah. And I really had to think about it. Well, do I want to listen to all these reasons why I can't? Or am I going to find a way to make it happen? And in that moment, my husband and I decided, let's find a way to make it possible. Like, let's not live our life with these excuses, but let's find a way to make these things possible. So I'm very lucky that that was just a scare and I'm healthy today. You know what? But it made me realize. What oh, yes. you just said there, living life on what's possible. Really, if anyone is listening, uh, for me, that speaks volume. The moment you shift from living for what you can do to what you can do, it is a game changer. Uh, and I love that you say that. 
Thank you for saying, you know, honestly, if you take away nothing else from this conversation, but just that, that, that question of how is it possible for whatever it is that you want? It does. It absolutely changes the game. I don't know how or why when we grow up, we start to build this list of reasons why we can't, but I want more people to grow up listing why they can and how they can, and how it's possible. That changes everything. Yeah. Um, so I, yeah. I love that you said that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So like that's, you know, it took us a few months, but we quit our jobs. We sold our house. We sold cars. We sold a lot of stuff. And I, and sitting here in downtown Vancouver, getting to connect with you today. So it's really a, a very much a dream come true to get to do this and get to be here. Um, and that that's the attitude that I try and bring to everything that I do. And imperfectly, you know, sometimes it's solid and sometimes it's challenging. But really ask myself, whatever it is that I want to do, how is it possible? How can I do it? Yeah. And one of the things I love about that is uh, once you uh, start living your dream, you found yourself perhaps getting back into a place where you were thinking, you know, I can't do this, I can't do this, because you were telling me a story about when you were looking for a job, uh, and maybe you could share that with our audience here today. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, the, you know, the phrase, old habits die hard, comes comes to mind when you say that. Mm -hmm. So it was, I, I don't want to say it was easy, but in, in a lot of senses, the, the move to Vancouver, it, we made it happen. You know, it was like, I had this fire under my butt and here I was going and oh, we were, my husband and I were both on board. We had this scare. And so it really motivated us to get going and get moving. But when I moved to the city, I, I was telling, I was telling you before that I started looking for a job because that's, that's what you do, right? You're, and I was 27. I needed jobs mm -hmm. <laughs> to survive here. And I was looking at these job descriptions and going to interviews. And this one description in particular, I read it and it was this great company. It sounded like an awesome organization and it should have been the perfect job. And by the way, anytime you hear yourself or somebody else saying things like should have been, that's usually a clue that it's not actually what you want. Mm -hmm. And that was a clue. I, I looked at it and I thought, wow, I don't, why am I not excited? And I just started reflecting. And I had that moment again, that realization. And the realization was because I don't want a job. I want to start my business. And I, I wanted to start a business for years. I went to business school. I have a double major in accounting and finance. And yet I, just like I had in Vancouver, I had a list of why I couldn't start a business yet. And on that list was, I don't have the right idea yet. I don't know what I'm doing. I need more experience. I need X amount of dollars in my bank account. I need my kids to move out before I can start a business. And I didn't even have a kid then. And I was already waiting for her to move out before I could do what I wanted to do. And so it was just, I, I realized, oh my gosh, here I am doing it again. This thing that I want to do, that I even started down the path of, I am pushing it off again. And that's what really made me realize that you know, it, we definitely, sometimes we, we need that, we need a motivation, we need an initial motivation to get us moving, but it's not always as simple as just having a scare or even having a, a pandemic or losing somebody close to you or have, losing a job. It To change who you are or to change how you show up is not a one-time moment. Yeah. It's actually the culmination of habits, of mindset, and of how we show up consistently more often than not. And that's what makes the difference. And that's what I needed to learn. That's what I need to figure out as how I could turn that my example or my story, my success of moving from the small town to moving to Vancouver, achieving my dream. How could I make that not just a one-time thing, but something I do over and over again? And then what I've done now is how did I help other people do that too? How do I help other women do that in their lives as well? Yeah, it's so true. And I really love that you have created a system that anyone can actually apply in their lives and get the same momentum. I'll tell you a story. When I got started, uh, Lisa, I, I went to Tony Robbins' event. You may be familiar with him, and I know most of my audience that know that I'm a uh, Tony Robbins fan. I got this surge of momentum, you know, started with uh, my outsourcing company straight away. But, you know, as you're running your business, you get in this uh, flow of doing things, literally uh, responding to queries, uh, you know, uh, marketing and all that, to the point that uh, you could lose yourself in all of it, especially if you don't take time out and work on yourself. Uh, it wasn't until I discovered that I needed something that keeps me going rather than just be a doing person, but actually growing into becoming a being person, that person who actually uh, becoming what I want to do. So it's incredible yeah. what you've created. Now, I know we're going to talk about uh, your system 
shortly. But if you were to do it all over again, knowing what you know now, uh, Lisa, uh, what would you do differently? Because you are helping a lot of people. Yeah, that's a great question. Thank you for sharing too your story. I think like what you said just is so powerful. It's not even just about the doing, it's about the being, right? Yeah. And who you're becoming and and remembering that vision and working towards that. Um, I think for myself, to be honest, I don't know that I would change anything because I think everything that I've experienced, I've been able to learn something from it and take something away from it. And even, you know, like, for example, uh, my voice is something that as a child, I grew up hating. I grew up, I was made fun of it sometimes. I felt really self-conscious about it. And it took me a long time to get comfortable with my voice and to feel good about my voice. Mm -hmm. And now here I am on this podcast with you. I have my own podcast. Mm -hmm. I'm actually a speaker. I speak at events. And now I really love my voice, but it's been a transition and it's been a transformation. And like what I would I go back and say, oh, I, you know, I wish people hadn't made fun of me or I wish I hadn't been so devastated about it. I wish I hadn't hated it so much. I mean, maybe, but now when I talk to a woman who also hates something about herself or has been self-conscious about something in her life, or, or if she had a dream that she also put on the back burner, I can actually come from a place of understanding mm -hmm. and share tools and things that may have helped me and also ask her the right questions to work through her, that herself. So I think that every single thing that I've been through, good or bad, there's something that I've learned from it. And then I think it also, it it's just part of the human experience. I think for a long time as a coach, especially, I thought I had to be perfect. I thought I had to have everything together. I had to have everything figured out because no one would want to work with me unless I had it all figured out. And what I've learned is that actually it's through all the mistakes that I continue to make, through the times that I still fall down, the failures I still have, and I come back from that. I show my resiliency. I grow my resiliency. I grow my courage. I become stronger. I become more confident in who I am. I learn more. That is actually what makes me a better speaker, a better coach, a better teacher, a better mom, a better version of me. Yeah. So I would say I wouldn't change any of it because otherwise I wouldn't learn and know what I, I have now. And I wouldn't be able to speak from a place of honesty and from a place that I understand I've been there. Here's some of the things that have helped me that might help you. And how do, like, how do we help others? So that's probably not the answer you're looking for, but that's the truth. Uh, you know, this is absolutely the answer I was looking for. In fact, recently we were talking about uh, life happens for you, not against you. Anything that is happening in your life right now is helping you move towards a certain direction, which you uh, have set up in your intention probably a long time ago. Everything is working together. Uh, it's a concept we've been talking about in uh, most recently. And to hear you talk about it without prompting you as to that, uh, it's, uh, it's such a blessing and I appreciate that. By the way, if you're listening, you want to check out the podcast, the Golden Girls podcast, uh, where Lisa uh, has done so well. In fact, I listened to your podcast, uh, actually, before we jump on this one, where you were talking to this lady about the vision, you know, living your life. I think the book, uh, number 42 it's, it is. It's incredible. I think everybody should listen to that. It was so good. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Let, let's talk about uh, the system you created. Uh, just uh, rewind a little bit, you know, after you discover, uh, you know, you need to live life on what's possible uh, from the health care. You then went on to creating your life uh, as you wanted. And then you created a system that maintained you to live uh, continuously and in the right direction. Let's talk about that for a moment. Maybe cover two or three points that you, you feel will be appropriate for our audience now. Yeah, thanks for thanks for giving me this chance. So what I realized through that process of me, you know, making a big change and then not being able to actually do more is, is that I there was there was a couple things that have to happen when it comes to any kind of a goal in your life or anything you're trying to achieve or create, whether it's business or personal or financial or health wise. And the first thing is that you really have to understand what it is that you actually want and you have to allow that. Don't make yourself wrong for that, you know, like really allow whatever that is for you to want it. The second thing is that you have to have the courage, and this is where this also gets challenging, the courage to actually say it out loud and say it to yourself and say it to others that you're actually going to go for it. Yeah. 
the third part is that you need to have some sort of a plan. Like you don't need to know everything. And I think that that's actually one thing that I really don't like smart goals. I don't think you need to know all the steps. You'll never know all the steps, but you need to at least have a few, you know, what's the first step or when am I approximately going to do this or what do I want to achieve? You've got to have some sense of a plan. Mm -hmm. And then the fourth thing is you really have to get out of your own way to make it happen. And when I say that is, you know, get out of your own way, like let go of the habits, the mindset, those parts of that are no longer serving you, limiting beliefs and stories, and instead create the ones that are, are going to allow you to become who you want to become. So those are the four things that I that I see are really important in, in any kind of a transformation, any kind of a goal, anything you're trying to achieve is knowing what you actually want, having the courage to claim it making at least some sort of a plan to get there and then getting out of your own way to make it happen. Yeah. So what I found is, oh, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, but please, please go ahead. I'm, I'm following this. This is wonderful. Absolutely brilliant. Oh, thanks. Thanks. A lot of, a lot of mistakes and falling down and be like, what is missing? And then I've, I've pieced it all together. But one of the other things I realized as well is that a lot of times and I believe actually even Tony Robbins has said this, that we overestimate what we can do in a year and we underestimate what we can do in five years. Yeah. And that was another really big thing that I noticed for myself and for others, I think entrepreneurs especially, we try and build a business that normally takes five or 10 years and we try and build it in six months. <laughs> and so what, <laughs> yeah, okay, you're laughing. So you know what I'm talking uh, about. I know <laughs> yes, I've made that mistake too. Yeah. Uh, so what I created is a 100 day goal system. So the, you know, the first part of it is really important is to actually figure out what it is that you truly want. And, you know, full disclosure, you're not going to be able to do all of the things in 100 days. But if you can first get a sense of what are all the things that you do want, then you can look and say, okay, what is the first thing that would make that feels good to tackle? What is the first thing I want to move the needle on? Uh, a really great book about this is called The One Thing by Gary Keller and Jay Papasan. And they call it the focusing question. They say, what's the one thing I could do that would make everything else easier or unnecessary? And and that's sort of a philosophy that I think is really good when you think about what's the first goal I could tackle? What's the first thing I'm going to do? So for me, it became, it was that move to Vancouver. That was like that first thing that was like, okay, I just like, this is what I, I meant to do. This is where I meant to be. When I was looking for a, a job or like for, I guess, the deeper meaning of it, as I was looking for a purpose, I was looking for somebody to contribute to society and earn a living. Um, that's what that was. And it was like, okay, hey, that's the first, that's what's got to happen here. And that's where I started my business. So for each person, like that's a great place to start is what's one thing that if I did it, it would make everything else easier or unnecessary. And I encourage people to just pick one goal goal and focus on it for 100 days. So 100 days, that is your focus. That's the thing. You know, you're listening. If you, if you're a podcast listener, which you probably are, if you're listening to this, you know, listen to podcasts on that topic, read a book on that topic, have conversations or networking related to that goal, that thing you're working on. Um, make time for that one thing, as opposed to trying to run a marathon, start your blog, uh, run a YouTube channel, also get another side hustle going, find your dream partner, travel around the world. I'll, we try to do all these things at once and it just doesn't work. Wow. So that's very yeah. simple. It's just one goal, 100 days, do it. <laughs> I, I wish somebody had shared this with me right at the beginning of my journey as an entrepreneur. It would have saved me a lot of headache. And if you're listening, maybe you're starting out this alone, this uh, has the power of focus. You know, people fail because of broken focus. If you can focus, really dedicate yourself to this concept, it's amazing how it, you become one with your goal to the point that you begin to observe opportunities that are linked to that, that otherwise you would have missed. Incredible. Uh, I love that. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I think as entrepreneurs, we're often really multi-passionate. We are very excited. We love what we're doing. We see the opportunities and want to go for them. And that's what makes us really special. So it makes us entrepreneurs. But it also can be something that really takes away from your ability to actually follow through on something because you're trying to do too many things. So what I also do is I also always keep a list of my next goals. Like, what are the things I'm going to do next? Because they always inevitably comes up. It's like, okay, you know, for example, I want to improve the SEO on my podcast, or I want to uh, optimize my customer service process, or I want to, um, my lead magnets, how do I, you know, make those more effective? 
perspective. Like these are all great ideas that I have. And what I do is I keep a note on my phone or now I have it in my planner. There's a page in, in my planner that says, these are the projects I'm gonna tackle later. These are the things I'm gonna do next. So that also allows me to still honor the exact great ideas that I have, the things that I wanna do. And if, if you're listening, that's a great way for you to do it too. Put a note on your phone, put a you know a board in your office where you can list out future projects and trust that you'll come back to them in a hundred days and then you can tackle the next one. But and you can probably, you know, if you've been an entrepreneur for any amount of time, you know that trying to do everything isn't working. So this is a way to, to tackle that. Yeah. yeah, amazing. You mentioned about having courage. Talk to us about that second step. Courage, yeah. I, well, I think so many times in our lives, we, we start to hide. So we, I mean, I think we do this unconsciously and consciously in some ways, but throughout life, you know, I'll give you an example in my life. I, when I was in grade two, I always loved to, I always loved to speak. I mean, my, my parents will tell you that I was always talking. Um, and I was actually told that I was, that I was doing show and tell too much in my class. And my teacher literally said, okay, you cannot do show and tell anymore, Lisa, because you're talking too much and you're taking away from the other kids. Oh. And it was messages. Yeah. Right. As a kid though, I just took that as truth. I took that as I talk too much, I'm too loud. And when I speak, I take away from other people. And so those are the messages that unconsciously got put into my head. And I know I'm not the only one, like a lot of people listening will probably, you know, there's some time that you've been told you're too quiet or you're too loud or you talk too much or you don't talk enough or um, you have, you dream too big. You know, I'm, how many times have we been told, you know, money doesn't grow on trees or who do you think you are? All those kinds of thoughts come in um, and they get planted. And I don't, you know, I don't share that because I think the teacher was a horrible person or anything like that. I think she was also doing her best yeah. and our parents are often doing their best. And, but these are the things that we grow up learning and and attaching to and so i think a big part of confidence is unlearning those things yeah. of realizing you know okay this thought that i when i speak i take away from other people i've literally had to deconstruct that and say is that actually the truth when i speak do i am i always taking away from other people yeah. and also sometimes borrowing beliefs you know would oprah believe that when she speaks that she takes away from other people no she understands the power of her voice and the power of her message and the power of what she does um so i think oftentimes you know i i hope that we're i'm changing this for my daughter i hope that we can change this for future generations but for us if we're listening to this in 2021 or you know in the next 15 20 years like we have learned a lot of these kinds of messages and i think courage comes down to figuring out what are the thoughts that you or beliefs that you may have that are no longer serving you? And how do you create the beliefs that are going to allow you to be courageous, that are going to allow you to go for what you want in your life, no matter how unrealistic it is, no matter how, how loud it's going to mean that you're going to be, no matter who might get mad when you do it, for us to still remember that this is who I want to be, this is who I'm meant to be, this is what I this is what I'm put on this earth to do. And I can only do that if I am courageous. I can only do that if I don't listen to the things that keep me small and instead I, I step into who I really am becoming, who I'm meant to be. Yeah. yeah, this is incredible, Lisa, what you're sharing with us here. And for those who are listening, I encourage you to check out uh, Lisa's uh, work uh, on the website. It will be uh, at the bottom of this uh, recording. Lisa, I want to talk about something you're very passionate about, which is the values. You and I know that, you know, your values decide the goals that you set and also ultimately decide how much you're going to follow after those goals, what type of uh, life you're going to live you know, after that. Can we spend some time talking about values and your system of creating the values that truly mean something to uh, the listeners? Yeah, I'm so glad you brought this up. I think most of us maybe grew up or if you've ever worked with a, a counselor or been in like a cap, cap class, career prep class, you maybe have done the exercise where they give you a list of 500 words and you circle the ones that you think are your values. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You've done that? I've done that, yes. Yes, yeah. exactly. <laughs> and like I, I made my husband do it. We've done it too. Um, but what I've realized is that a lot of the times we circle the values that we think we should have versus what our true values are. So for example, if you have kids or a, a partner, you're probably gonna circle family as a value. <laughs> uh, a lot of times people circle environment as a value. A lot of times people might circle faith as a value. And it's not that those things are not important, but I, 
there's a different way of looking at values. And so this is how I learned through my coach training, how I learned to look at values and what I then take and work with my clients on. So instead of looking at values as like a circle of the word, what, and as you're listening, you can do this as well. What I encourage you to do instead is to start with themes. So ask yourself some questions and I'll, I'll give you a few examples. Get to know you. So ask yourself some questions like, where am I spending the majority of my time? You know, let, look at your calendar. Where is your time being spent? Look at your bank statement. Where are you spending the most of your money? And what's the money you enjoy spending? And what's the money you you, you look at and it's like, someone steal my credit card again? Come on, what happened here? You know, what's the money you're like, oh, I wish I had spent that, right? Yeah. Think about the three people in your life that you really respect. Think about three movies that you really love and ask yourself why. Look at your life and ask, you know, what are the things that really make me angry? Think about the things that really, you know, make you want to scream. What are the things that really make you mad? Yeah. And you can do this, you know, on your own. You can do this with a, talking it out loud. You can journal this. You can do it with a partner. But ask yourself those, ty- those, those are like five questions that you can ask on your own. And as you look through the answers of that, then what you can do is pull out the themes and pull out what the ideas are. Because chances are that there are some consistent themes that run through all of those things. And you'll notice, I asked you about things like movies, time, money, uh, you know, even your own, the things that, that make you angry, who, who frustrates you to no end, those things. So very different things. But you'll notice that throughout all of those things, there are consistent themes that really make you happy or light you up or that really trigger you and make you angry. And that is how you can figure out what your values truly are. Because what I have found is that your value is not actually family. Your value is, you often have a different value, which is like how you want to show up for your family. So for example, one of my values, and and I've made mine really fun. Mine are usually, they just happen to be this way. I have one of my values is called Lady Gaga. One of them is girls just want to have fun. (laughs) Uh, You know, that won't make any sense to you. But to me, I get, you know, I'm laughing. It makes sense to me. So one of those values is girls just want to have fun. So that means that girls just want to have fun is how I show up, not just to, you know, a dance party, but it's also how I show up to this podcast interview with you. You know, I want to make sure we have some laughs. Yeah. It's also how I show up as the mom. I want to have dance parties with my kid. It's also how I show up in my relationship that I make sure we have, have time to go and play together and do fun things. Yeah. And so you can see how when you understand the theme or your, your actual value, it can apply to any aspect of your life as opposed to, oh, I value family. That doesn't actually tell me how to show up with my family or how I want to be with my family. What is It doesn't actually tell me anything. When I say one of my values is environment or faith, I don't actually understand how to, what to be or how to, what to do in that. But when I understand that, say my, my value is that girls just want to have fun or my Lady Gaga is around being really authentic and, and vulnerable and being myself, well, then I understand. I can actually say, okay, now I know how I want to show up for my faith or how I want to show up you know, in my bank account, you can probably imagine what girls just want to have fun looks like on a credit card. <laughs> uh, luckily, that's also not my husband's. <laughs> we, balance we balance each other out. Let's just say that. Um, but that that just gives you an idea of how how when you understand your theme that looking at then you can look at your business then you can look at the way you spend your time you can look at the way you spend your money and honor your values in that way instead of trying to figure out well what does it even mean if family is a value does that make sense absolutely and of course you can build your goals around that because you know what's driving you and automatically those goals are in line with what you truly want and that's what life is all about living on purpose living the way you want to live and uh, not doing it because somebody else uh, told you that this is something to go after. Uh, exactly. I, I totally love yeah. it. I know you work with uh, a lot of ladies uh, at the moment who may be going through. What are some of the difficulties they come across when it comes to identifying their values or really going through this process that you may want to highlight uh, for our listeners and maybe uh, you can suggest you know, how, how to go about doing that? Yeah. So I think number one, a lot of people have never even done this. Yeah. You know, most people have not actually had the opportunity to go that deep again, beyond the circle, of the words exercise. So I think even just that is really transformational. And I have people, you know, I've done a, a workshops on values before and I have people coming back to me a year or two later and 
just happened to me last week where they say, wow, I did that. Like that workshop was amazing. It transformed the whole way I looked at my, at my life at the, in the last year or two. Mm -hmm. And that's pretty cool. So I think even just that, you know, if you take what I just shared with you, um, and actually I have podcast episode 13, I have even more on values. If, if you guys want to listen to that, there's a little bit, I, I go into a little more detail on that as well, but that's kind of the first thing is I think a lot of people don't even give themselves time and space and permission to necessarily do that and figure that out. Some of the other things I think, um, I think competing values is something that's challenging and I won't sugarcoat this. It can be hard because sometimes our values, you know, for example, um, you may have a value that is something like girls just want to have fun. And you may also have a value around, let's say, for example, legacy. And maybe legacy means that you want to create a legacy as far as the work that you're doing, or maybe legacy in your finance finances in terms of, you know, you want to donate to a certain cause or leave money for your, for your children or something like that. And so that kind of a value can bump up against a value, like for example, Oh, girls want to have fun. Um, if I only lived that value, I would be spending all my money and never be working. <laughs> it would be so much fun, right? Yeah. So I think that's the important thing. That I think it's something that's really difficult sometimes is to balance those competing values. And I would say that's probably like values can be very helpful sometimes when you're making decisions. It's really it's a great tool actually. Look at your values and say which decision here honors my values. But it can also be challenging when some of your values are being. Um, they're being, they're competing against each other. And that's where I say, I always go back to, you know, okay, you don't, don't have to put either of those values on the shelf forever. But this is, and this is a part of the reason why I created the 100 day framework is because I found hundred days was enough that you can move the needle, that you can make an impact on something and change something in your life. But it wasn't so long that you felt like you were committed to it. Like you'd never get to, you know, have fun fun again, or like you were never going to save money again or whatever that was. Mm -hmm. And so, um, that's where I think that's really powerful to say, you know what? Okay. What does it look like, um, for the next 100 days? Like, which of these values or which of these things do I feel like is more imp important to honor right now? Mm -hmm. Is it that I want to really focus on building my legacy? And maybe that means, uh, focusing on earning more income or going, getting a raise or raising your prices in your business, or, you know, if I'm going to do this create this brand new product to launch in my business or whatever that is. Maybe that's that focus or maybe for the hundred days, you know what? I've actually been working really hard and I'm creating legacy, but right now this part of me having fun, I'm not having it. I'm not having as much fun as I want to be having. And so I'm going to take Friday afternoons off or I'm going to, maybe I look at like, how do I, even incorporate more fun into my business. Can I, you know, play more, play more music as I'm, as I'm doing my work? Can we have more fun team meetings? Can we do team building? Like those are the kinds of things. And so I think values like that, I would say that's probably the biggest, um, like the biggest challenge of values is sometimes they compete, but I think being able to say, you know, which one right now do I want to honor? And remember that we can always come back to them later in a hundred days. Um, and also then looking at it, like, how can I honor this across all the different aspects of my life that that can be helpful as well. Outstanding, absolutely outstanding. We're learning a lot today from you, Lisa. Uh, one of the things I truly appreciate about you is you have a system. Maybe you've identified habits that guarantees success uh, that you normally share with uh, your you know, uh, with your audience. Would you share with us as we are getting into a new period? A lot of people are. Uh, you know, setting goals, and there's a lot of things happening there. But in your opinion, uh, would you identify maybe two or three uh, habits that business owners can start implementing right now uh, that could uh, help them achieve their goal maybe in 100 days from now or even a year from now? Yeah. So let me say, first of all, I think that – the number one thing is to think about what is your goal and what kind of habit would support you with that goal. So for example, if your goal is to in, increase your revenue and you have a sense that you might do that through a new product or maybe through a, a bigger audience, like you may want to think about, okay, what would it look like then for me to grow my audience? What are the habits that I need in order to do that? And so I think it's really important to have habits that are specific to your goal. That's a really important step that I think a lot of people miss is to actually think about like, what am I trying to achieve? And again, goals aren't made, you know, in a, in a snap of a finger, it's, it's actually who we're becoming and what we're doing. So it's a matter of reverse engineering that goal and thinking about what habit do you need for your goal. So I think that's really important. So if you're listening to this, um, if only, you know, what your goal is and chances are, you probably know what some of those habits are that you could put into place. So trust that. And if you don't know, do some research. What have other successful people that, that have done it? What kinds of habits did they create? What kinds of things did they do? So I think it's about thinking about what do you need for your specific goal? 
Huh. Now, I also will share a couple kind of that I think are helpful for anybody, no matter what your goal is, that have been really helpful for me and for my clients too. So number one, the biggest thing I will, I could talk about this all day, so I'll try not to, but <laughs> week, weekly planning. So every single week, and I've been doing this for about 11 years now, sit down and look at your week ahead. Be intentional about it. Say, you know, what am I going to do this week towards my goal? And then write it down and actually put the time in your calendar, block that time to do it. So whether your goal is around getting better sleep, well, then you better, you know, set aside an hour ahead of bedtime that you're winding down, like put that actually in your calendar. Maybe it's getting up earlier, put that into your calendar. Maybe it is spending more intentional time with your family, put that in your calendar. Um, in those same moments, think about what do I, what do I need to feel my best? Cause everything, everything we create comes from us. So what do you need to actually thrive and feel good? So this is where, you know, if you need to, if you want to go for a walk, if you want to connect with a friend, if you want to go to an exercise class, uh, I don't know if you guys are allowed to do that over there these days. But whatever it is you need to thrive, put that in your calendar. And during that time while you're planning, you know, if you're booking a meeting with somebody that you want to have, send out the Zoom link, get that done. If you need to hire a babysitter, go in and reach out and hire the babysitter. If you are planning a special night with your partner, order the food so it's going to be delivered to you. Whatever you're going to do, like go ahead and actually set yourself up for success. And if you take, you know, half an hour, 10 hour, depending on how complicated your schedules are and all that, at the beginning of the week, either, you know, Friday afternoon, Sunday night, whatever, Monday morning, sit down and actually say, what am I going to do this week? What am I, how am I going to move the needle on, on my goal? And also how am I going to make sure that I still feel good and that I'm being, t I'm taking care of myself. If you can do that every single week, that habit right there, honestly, I can credit, I credit so much success to it because a week time period is enough that you can actually make some progress, but it's not so far that you kind of lose track of where you are. So it's just, it, you can have a couple of days that are off, you know, Monday, Tuesday, oh, I just, <laughs> they were crazy. They were unexpected, but I still have a few more days to catch up and, and find the time to create the time to do what I want to do. So weekly planning is one of those habits. I would say that no matter who you are, no matter what your goal, get in that habit it is one of the most powerful things that, I, that I've ever done in my life. Wow. The se second habit I would share that I find is really powerful. I think we don't do this enough is reflecting. So I also have now started incorporating this in my weekly reflection or in my weekly planning. I also do a reflection on the last week, what worked, what, what didn't, what was the biggest challenge that I faced and what would I advise somebody else in the situation to do those kinds of questions. Uh, and then I also do it monthly. I look back and say, well, how did my last month go? You know, what were, what am I really proud of? What were some of the things maybe that got in my way? And then looking ahead to say, what can I, what does that look like now for this month? And what I, using what I've now learned, and it's especially, you know, that life's happening for me concept, like everything that just happened for me, how can I now use that to show up as my best in the next month ahead? And I think reflection is just so powerful because in our world, we, we become, we're, we're we're, from children, we learn certain things and I, the world is changing fast. We are constantly changing. And I think we sometimes lose that disconnect to who I really am, what I actually like, what I'm enjoying, what I'm not enjoying and putting in place markers for reflection. That's what allows you to stay living aligned. That's what allows you to stay living with your values to pick up on when things aren't working. Wow. Otherwise, we become slaves to our to-do list. We become slaves to the goals that may or may not be meaningful. Mm -hmm. But by reflecting, that that keeps us grounded, keeps us going in the right direction. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. We are coming toward the end of our time, Lisa. You have been knocking it out of the park here tonight, <laughs> today, and we appreciate that. And I'm sure there will be people who want to carry on learning with you. Where can they find you? Oh, thank you. Uh, this has been so much fun. I, I, you are just so genuine and it's really fun to have this conversation with you. So thank you. Um, if anyone wants to get in touch, you can find me at lisamichaud.com. And I'm also uh, very active on social media, on Instagram and Facebook and even Pinterest at the Lisa Me Show is where you can find me. And I'd love to connect with you. Um, if you want to have a listen to my podcast, it's called Golden Girls Podcast, as in goals, G-O-A-L, <laughs> Golden Girls Podcast. And it's on every platform as well. It's wonderful. I definitely vouch for the podcast because I thought I was going to listen for just a small part so I hear what it's all about. I got hooked and ended up listening to the whole conversation, which was uh, amazing. Love it. And I think uh, you will enjoy it too when you listen to it. Well, if you need more information, we will provide the links uh, below this uh, 
audio recording for you to just go straight there. And again, uh, we have opened uh, open sessions uh, for our Lifestyle Mastermind program, which you can uh, register right now. We uh, started last week and these two some discounts are, uh, that are going up there. So with that said, we appreciate you being here and I look forward to catching up with you very, very soon. Lisa, you've been wonderful. Thank you for being with us tonight. Thank you for listening to Ukai Business Show. We will be back to bring you more episodes with success stories and advice straight from the experts. Want more? Check out www.ukibusinessshow.com. Get your free trial of our virtual assistance service today. Just visit www.worldoutsourcingsolutions.com. Quote W O S 1 8 or send us an email at support at worldoutsourcingsolutions.com. 